Thank you, Anthony. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Today is the uh, first Sunday of September, which means that this is a communion Sunday, so I won't drag out the welcome. We'll need the extra time for communion. Uh, but this is also the last weekend of summer, and I do hope that you're enjoying your three-day weekend. And uh, we'll keep in our prayers a little bit later all those who are traveling as they make their last grass for that beach or wherever they're going to the mountains or whatever for this three-day weekend. Uh, the kids are already back in school. The teachers are already back in school. This week it's supposed to be in the 90s. God bless them one and all. Uh, so hope all goes well for them too. So with all of that said, let us turn to our opening hymn and candle lighting. Red hymnal number eight, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. <laughs> Now turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. Why have we chosen to gather on this holy day? What has drawn us to this time of shared worship? We have been drawn to the spiritual flame of God's most holy presence. We can feel the nearness of the sacred. It is the Spirit who calls us to these special moments of worship. This hour becomes our holy ground where we meet God. Out of Horeb's burning bush, God spoke to Moses. In the rhythms of worship, God speaks to us today. We will listen for God's still speaking word. God's power will overcome all that oppresses us and grant us freedom. 
We've now come in together, this congregation in person, those people who join us later in FCAT, and also those with us now at home, our unison prayer. We tremble to think that the source of all life, the creator of all worlds, is among us now, sharing in our worship, knowing our thoughts and our fears, our hopes and our plans, calling us each by name. O oh God, we dare to call on your most holy of names, to bow before you, to welcome your word. We tremble to think what it means to stand on the holy ground where you make yourself known to us and challenge us to stand up to the oppressors of this world. You are a liberating God and one who is willing to sacrifice alongside of us. Jesus revealed that his victory would be through sacrifice. And then Jesus asked us to follow him by taking up our crosses. Grant us the conviction and courage to be faithful disciples as we dare to accept the name of Christian. Amen. <laughs> Chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad and land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is my title for all generations. We
Would Macy like to come down? Oh, here it is. Hi there. So first of all, I want to say thank you to you and to Wendy for the beautiful flowers that you gave to all of us just to put a smile on our face. That was very, very kind of you. So we much appreciate these beautiful flowers that were given to all of us. So I don't even know, are you in school? Yes. What grade? First grade. First grade? So that's all day, right? Mm -hmm. You're all day in school. Do you like it? Yeah. And when did you start school? Was it Thursday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. So you went to school Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and now you're on vacation mm -hmm. for a few days, then you go back to school next Tuesday, like the day after tomorrow? Okay. okay. So anything surprise you on your first day of school? I don't know. Did any, like, were you expecting, you know, your teacher? Did you already know who your teacher was going to be? Miss and, and so you already knew that? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. How about your, any new yeah. kids in the class with you that you never met before? No, everybody's the same from last year. That's got to be kind of fun, huh? How about any, anything new did you learn already in the first couple of days of school? That must be hard, the first couple of days. I bet you're just kind of getting into the process, right? So I just think that I remember on the first day of school, there were some surprises that kind of snuck up on you, but the best thing was kind of knowing what you had to do. But the surprises were always there. Later on, we're going to hear a gospel story, um, and Matthew's going to tell us a really surprising story about Peter being really surprised. Uh, so let's think of Peter as the, as the student, the pupil, and we'll think of Jesus as the teacher. And Jesus had said that I'm going to go, and things aren't going to go well in Jerusalem, and I'm going to end up on the cross, and I'm not going to feel so good, I'm not going to do so well, I'm going to die. And Peter was so surprised by what Jesus said that he's the student. He took the teacher aside. He pulled Jesus aside and said, you can't talk like that. That's not what's going to happen. This is the way it's going to be. And Jesus, the teacher, said, oh my gosh, Peter, you just don't get it. You're not being surprised by what I say. You want me to be like you, and instead you have to be like me. And so Jesus surprised Peter. And Peter got in a little bit of trouble. Um, when I was in school, sometimes we got sent down to the principal's office, or sometimes we had to sit off in the corner somewhere. Uh, the worst one was when you got in trouble and you had to go sit out in the hall, and everybody walking by knew that, oh, you got in trouble, you got caught. And that was the worst thing, because that was really embarrassing. Well, Peter, he, got, he was so surprised that he got in trouble, and people for 2,000 years have remembered that story. And so the message in today's gospel is let Jesus surprise you. Let the teacher bring new things to you. And when those new things come, don't say to the teacher, no, 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 you're wrong. Listen to the teacher and let the teacher teach. Okay, and that's what we're here for, to let Jesus be the teacher. So thanks again for the flower. Very much appreciated. Put a smile on my face and, I, and have a good worship. And our special music today is Nocturne in C Minor by Chopin.
That's definitely concert quality piano playing, Anthony. So thank you for sharing that with us here at Sunderland Congregational. Much appreciated. So it's now a chance for us to share in our prayers, our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. Uh, so let's continue to pray for Ukraine. Uh, there is an um, offensive taking place over there. Ukraine is making advances, but that means that there's death on both sides and injuries and harm and pain. And so we just pray for peace in that war-torn area. We also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. And with that in mind, um, I'd like to share with you a prayer authored by Reverend James D. Ross of our Southern New England Conference of the UCC. And it's in response to last weekend's shooting of three black people who were at a Dollar General or a dollar store or something like that. Uh, a 21-year-old white guy walks in, uh, tells the whites to get out of there, and then indiscriminately shoots and kills three black people uh, just because they're black. And then this 21-year-old throws his wife life away. He commits suicide, so filled with hate that he goes out on a murder spree and then commits suicide at 21. And that inspired this prayer uh, by Reverend James D. Ross. God be with us in this time of turmoil. May the three who were murdered last weekend in Jacksonville, Florida, only because they were black, be welcomed by Jesus into heaven. We especially ask you to embrace the families of those killed in that entire community. Remind them, even now, that you hold them in your palms. Strengthen us to be a good support for them and faithful stewards of the legacy of Jesus, of the Jesus that we claim. I'd also like to offer prayers for a friend of mine, Richard, um, who is battling cancer. Prayers for a friend of mine, uh, Fred Bechta, who has been having some health issues recently that he may enjoy a quick and a full recovery. Also prayers for another friend of mine who is battling a severe blood disorder and for a quick and full healing there as well. Uh, before we hit our yellow sheet, does anybody like to offer any joys, celebrations, concerns of your own? Okay, then let us turn to our yellow sheet for these prayers. Let us pray for Alan, Alice, Anne, Antonia, and family, Art, Bill, Bonnie, Brenda, Carrie, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Doug, Evelyn, Frank, Frank, Grayson, Hayden, Jeff, John, 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 Kathy, Kevin, Lauren, Leslie, Marcia, Martha, Mary Jane, Michelle, Mike, Paula, Pauline, Prue and Bart and family, Sandra, Cheryl, Steve, Thelma, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence and natural disasters around the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And may we now turn inward for just a few moments of silence in the midst of our public worship to offer God those prayers that just can't be said out loud. So just a few moments of silence. God of our forebears, whose presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth continues to challenge us, grant us strength and courage to deny ourselves when necessary and to follow the example of Jesus who stood with those who suffer around the world, who identify with the powerless and abused around the world, and who struggle to create a better world for us all. Help us to live with hope and patience so that we may bridge the differences among us, promote harmony, and contribute to the fostering of peace and trust among all of God's good creation. Encourage us in these endeavors by letting us know that you hear our prayers and assuring us that the God of heaven is not far from us and that our sufferings and our worries, even our joys, they are known and that we all matter to God. And we are invited to come closer on the holy ground that is this church before God. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Jesus invites us to take notice of the misery of others who must live in conditions of oppression and poverty and even hopelessness. We have the resources to help make a difference in their lives when we give back to God some of what God has already given to us. Let us therefore give in response to all that God has blessed us with in our lives and to do so with a profound joy that we are acting as co-workers with Jesus and in the knowledge, too, that our donations help us to come together in this beautiful sanctuary, our symbolic mountain where we come to meet God. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow. And if you're not with us in person, your donations may be mailed here to the church. But if you are here, we do appreciate whatever you can give. Thank you. Accept, O Lord, these gifts now to be placed in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. We're in the midst of the three-day weekend of Labor Day, and Labor Day celebrates all those who work, and they deserve to be honored for the, the dedication that they prove by going to work day in and day out for their families, for our nation, for the good of our communities. But we also work for the church, so we can give to the church financially, such as these donations here, but we also give to the church by what we do for the church. And so for all of you who support Sunderland Congregational financially and through your labors, may God bless you for your continuing support. And may God bless these gifts, whether in kind or monetarily, so that we may continue to be the presence of Jesus in our local communities. In his name we pray. Amen. So on Communion Sundays, we go right from that to the Gospel and then to the Sermon. And since we don't have anyone downstairs and because of time, uh, let us just skip over the Communion hymn because the Sermon kind of leads directly into Communion. So we'll go from the Gospel to the Sermon to Communion. Today's Gospel is taken from Matthew 16, verses 21 through 28. 
From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo, undergo great suffering there at the hands of the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke Jesus, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life, they will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, they will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the entire world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So this past Wednesday, Sharon and I, we went to the Shea Theater over in Turner's Falls. And we went there to see our friend and our plumber, Frank Marshand, talk about his mortality. And so we had a one-man show. Were any of you there by any chance on you were there, okay. Um, so you saw, it was about three hours long and the entire time really kind of went by kind of quickly. And so his, he titled his one man show, I Can Die Happy Now. And as the, the curtains open, there's no Frank, this one man show, there's no Frank, there's a casket front and center on the stage. And all you see is the casket. There's no music, there's no sound, there's no Frank, just the casket. And you know, when, when you're quiet, um, it can seem like a lot longer than the actual time is when you're just not doing anything, saying anything. But it was a good while where there's nothing happening. We're just looking at this casket. And out of the casket eventually comes Frank Marshan, my friend and my plumber. And Frank admitted at the beginning of the show to avoiding colonoscopies. Um, Maybe it was because of his age. Maybe it was because of other conditions that the doctor said, you've got to get these colonoscopies, Frank. And it's not a pleasant experience. And so Frank kept coming up with excuses or postponing, and he wouldn't get his colonoscopies done. At the age of 60, he finally gets his first colonoscopy. He comes out from the procedure, you know, wakes up. And as he wakes up, the doctor has to tell him, you've got cancer, Frank. And so he says, I want, to, I want to operate on the cancer sooner rather than later. It's not long after Frank goes in for that cancer operation. And as he has the operation, as he comes out of this one, the doctor has to tell Frank that his cancer is stage four, it has metastasized, and it's terminal. And so Frank went from a guy who was healthy and happy and normal to a guy who has just heard you have stage four metastasized cancer, and it's terminal. And so Frank has now been battling this cancer for like seven years, and he's been doing it with determination, insight, and humor. The insight came out when he talked for three hours. He had a lot of stuff to tell us, but the humor, and I hope you're not offended by this, but he told 200 of us at the Shea Theater that, you know, this guy who wouldn't go for those colonoscopies because they were so embarrassing and intrusive, well, they became so regular that he took post-it notes and he put them right there so that the doctor, so that the doctor, when he would go in for the procedure, would have this post-it note from some kind of funny message from Frank to the doctor who was going to be working back there. And so he's endured more than a hundred, more than, I don't know what the number was, but more than a hundred chemo treatments and he's always going to work. You may see his truck around. He never takes the day off. You know, chemo can really knock you out and, and yet Frank has been going to work and he's also gone through these stages of grief, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And when he got to the point of accepting that it was terminal, well, Frank decided that, you know, he wanted to make sure that his life meant something, uh, that he left something behind that made the world a little bit better. And that's what led him to do this uh, three-hour uh, talk over at the Shea Theater about I can die happy now. He wanted to share some of the insights that his obvious mortality 
kind of emphasized for him. So he came off the stage, and he comes down, and he asks us to hold our breath. And, you know, because Frank's not feeling all that well, as he was holding his breath, it really wasn't all that long. It wasn't uncomfortable. But Frank wanted us to know that at some point, each and every one of us in that theater, each and every one of us here, we're going to have a breath and not a following breath. We're all going to breathe, and then there won't be that next breath. He wanted us to know that all of these ordinary things that we take for granted, how many times we're going to be breathing during this one hour, at some point we're going to have our last breath. And Frank wanted us to remember that this is not a morbid thought. It is a reminder that we are mortal. We have a certain amount of time on earth. Make the best use of that time that you can. Make sure that life is precious. Even in those ordinary moments, make sure that life is precious. Do something with the time that you have to make a difference. Because we are not taking our last breath now. And Frank, even who after seven years with this terminal diagnosis of cancer, has not come to that last breath yet. And so he wants to make sure that every moment that we are blessed on this world, that we can do something with it. And as he closed his show, this really serious somber show that he made us laugh several times. He closed it by taking out a six-pack, opening up a beer, taking a slug, and then crawling back into his casket. And as he went into his casket, the sound system at the Shea Theater was playing a polka. And that polka was, in heaven there is no beer, that's why we drink it here. And when we're gone from here, all our friends will be drinking all the beer. Now, that one I can sing. I usually turn my mic off when I sing, but that one I can sing because I've heard that since I was yay tall. I'm half Polish. I've heard those, those songs forever. And so that just put a smile on my face as we came to the end of his talk, or his show, his one-man show, I Can Die Happy Now. And the message is, life is serious, life is fun, but don't squander it. And so when you're talking about life is serious and fun, don't squander it, think about today's two readings. Moses is, a, is a, a murderer. He has killed a taskmaster in Egypt for beating up on one of the Hebrew slaves. And because he was recognized, he had to flee out into the wilderness. And that's why he's tending the sheep of his, his, of his father-in-law, Jethro, out in the wilderness by this Mount Horeb in the Sinai. And he sees off in the distance a, bu a bush that is burning but not being consumed. And Moses goes up to see the bush, and out of the bush he hears the voice of God. And God tells Moses, this murderer, this one who has fled from Egypt, he says to Moses, this is holy ground. Take off your sandals. This is holy ground. And so he says, I am the God of your fathers, Abraham and Jacob, and I, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is a holy place. And what does Moses do? He hides his face. He's terrified of coming into the presence of God because God is scary. Get too close to God and you die. And so he has crossed some kind of barrier, and he is now on the holy ground, and he's terrified to be that close to God, and he hides his face. And what does God do, though? God reveals his name to Moses. He says, I am who I am, Yahweh. And, you know, the name in the ancient world, it meant something. It's more than, you know, just picking out a name in a, in a baby book. Names carried meaning. And when God says, I am who I am, the relationship with Moses changes. They become intimate. So now that barrier that was once a terrifying, don't tread on this holy ground, now God and Moses have come together. They are intimate. I am who I am. And so God says, I know what's going on back in Egypt. I see the misery that's going on with my people, and I'm going to change it. And you know the stories in Sunday school about the ten plagues and all that. But he doesn't just do it himself from heaven. He needs someone on earth to help him. And so he sends Moses back to where he's a known murderer. And he sends him back to the people who want really eventually, they said, Moses, get out of here. You're making our, our life harder. But Moses goes through all of this because he had that intimate relationship with God as I am who I am. And God saw the misery of those people. Moses saw the misery of those people. And God would not do it from heaven like magic. God needed someone to work with him. And so Moses had to sacrifice to go back to those people to lead them to freedom. 
Think about today's gospel, where last week we heard about, you know, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, said Peter. And he had this wonderful idea of a powerful God. And now today Jesus says, I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to die, and that's going to be the it for me for this earthly life. I'm going to die. And Peter says, you can't, Jesus, you can't say those kinds of things. And, G, and Peter, he argues with Jesus and says, stop it, Jesus. And Jesus says those words that are just amazing, get behind me, Satan. Because you're thinking according to the way you think, not the way God thinks. And then he turns away from Peter and he talks to all those who are gathered around him, all the disciples, and he says to all of them, you have to pick up your crosses and follow me. So Jesus gives everything, even to the point of sacrificing his life. He gives absolutely everything that he has to change us and change our world, but he can't do it alone. And he says to us, take up your crosses and follow me. And so, just like Moses had to suffer so that God's will could be done, we need to sacrifice so that Jesus' will can be done. It's not a snap of the fingers. He needs us to do what God needs us to do. And so on the night before he died, the night before he sacrificed his life, Jesus came to a simple table with a simple meal. And he said simple, profound words. That he says, even though I am going to die, I will be with you forever. Do this in remembrance of me. And I don't think he just meant this. He meant take up your crosses too and follow me. Help me to make a better world. You won't do it alone. I'll be with you in communion always. But help me. So life is precious. Enjoy life. But do not squander it. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I believe you all have your communion inserts in the bulletin. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. The gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on that same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is a joyful feast of the people of God. Women and men, youth and children, for this table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God the Most High. It is good to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, Christ lived among us to reveal the light and life of your grace, to suffer on the cross for us, to be raised from death, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church among us. And with your daughters and sons of faith in all times, all places, we praise you with joy by saying, Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of his betrayal and desertion, that Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the bread. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the cup. May we now share in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal, unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And in your bulletin are the words for shalom to you now as our hymn of closing.
thank you for coming out this midpoint of your long three-day weekend. I hope that it's been enjoyable, and it will be enjoyable. And uh, for all those kids going back to school, I hope you enjoy your four days there until you have your full week next week, and the same thing goes for the teachers as well. And so let us now share in our benediction, and then we can part with our congregational response. Seek every day the presence that we have known among us here and now at worship. Accept the helping hand of God so that we may tackle every challenge we face as we seek to expand God's reign on earth. Let our worship continue and expand through what we do to bring dignity and to end misery among all of God's beloved people. Let us praise God for the blessing shared with us and for the opportunity to serve in Jesus' name. So let us now go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do among all whom we may meet. Amen. Amen.